Medieval Leadership of the Kingdom of Marika 777 Morningstar Spiritual leadership is a blending of natural and spiritual qualities utilized for influencing God's people to accomplish God's purposes. Even the natural qualities are not self-produced but God-given and therefore reach their highest effectiveness when employed in the service of God and His glory. Psalm chapter 78 verse 72 With upright heart, He shepherded them and guided them with His skillful hand. Like Moses, He learned how to shepherd with literal sheep. King David, who would be the shepherd of his people? And Jesus, the good shepherd, who would guide his people perfectly? The king is ideally a shepherd of his people, caring for them, protecting them, and leading them in faithfulness to the covenant. Hello everyone, the good news is here in currently spreading. The Kingdom of Maharlika 777 Morningstar Foundation Incorporated share with you an impact knowledge to all of us on how to implement ourselves and understand spiritual leadership. All of us can be a leader and all of us can be a spiritual leaders to be a good role model to our co-human beings. So the Kingdom of Maharlika 777 Morningstar is sincerely hearted to invite you to listen and join us in spreading the good news about spiritual leadership. Seven 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 one star. Kick up of Marga presents. present 
mundane foreigner to his amazing man would be someone who could be speak bilingual or multilingual by whatever comparison. Paul was certainly one of the most versatile leaders of the kingdom has known. His versatility is apparent in the ease with which he adopted to various audiences. Paul could address a statement and soldiers, adults and children, kings and royal officials. He was at ease in debate with philosophers, theologians, and pagan idol worshippers. Paul had a brilliant grasp of the Old Testament. He studied under the influential rabbi, Gamaliel. And as a student, Paul was second to none. His own testimony record. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many Jews of my own age. And then was advancing in Judaism beyond many Jews of my own age and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. You can read it in Galatians chapter 1 verse 14. In natural leaders, by any measure, Paul became a great spiritual leader when his heart and mind were captured by Jesus Christ. Paul had boundless, Christ-centered ambition. His supreme love for Christ coupled with the obligations to share Christ's message were his powerful lifetime motives in Romans chapter 1 verse 14 and 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 14 says that his authentic missionary passions help him live over all cultural and racial barriers. All people were his concern. A person's wealth or poverty, social status or intellect had bearing on Paul's concern for him. In addition to his own schooling and experience, Paul enjoyed the illuminations and inspirations of the Holy Spirit. The qualities of leadership Paul taught are as relevant now as during the first century after death. We dare not toss them off, off as unacquainted or carelessly regard them as a mere options. The selections from 1 Timothy, quoted at the head of this chapter, spells out qualifications for spiritual leadership. Let us look it again and consider its part. In social qualifications, with respect to relationships within the kingdom, the leader is to be above reproach. Detractors should not have a rung to stand on. If a charge is referred against him, it would fail because his life would afford no grounds for reproach or indictment of wrongdoing. His adversary finds to open him a smear campaign, rumor, mongering, or gossip. With respect to relationships outside the kingdom, the spiritual leader is to enjoy good reputations. An elder known to the author was a businessman who often took preaching appointment of the Lord's Day. His employees used to say that they could tell when he had been preaching on Sunday because of his ill temper on Monday. Those, who's, those outside the kingdom can see plainly when our lives fall short of our destiny.
ceremony. We cannot hope to lead people to Christ by living an example of such contradictions. Outsider will criticize. Nonetheless, they respect the high ideals of king character. When a kingdom leader full of high ideals lives a holy and joyful life in front of unbelievers, they will want to cultivate a similar experience. The character of the elder should command the respect of the unbeliever, inspire his confidence, and arouse his aspirations examples is much more potent than respect. Immoral qualifications. More principles common to the Christian's life are under constant. Subtle attack and none more than so that sexual faithfulness. The kingdom leader must be blameless on this vital and often unpopular point. Faithfulness to one marriage partner is the biblical norm. The spiritual leader should be a man of unchangeable morality. The spiritual leader must be temperate, not addicted to alcohol. To be drunk is to show a disorderly personal life. Drink is a disgrace anywhere and much more. So, when it is captures a Christian, a leader cannot allow a secret indulgence that would undermine public witness. In mental qualifications, a leader must be prudent, a person with some judgment. This principle describes the well-balanced state of mind, resulting from habitual self-restraint, the inner character that comes from daily self-discipline, reasons girded and passions bridled. The ancient Greek who valued this quality described it a disciplined mind not swayed by sudden impulse or flying to extremes. For example, courage to the creeds was the golden mean between rashness and timidity. Purity was the mean between fraudery and immorality. In a similar way, the Christian leader who possesses a sound mind has control of every part of his personality, habits, and passions. As to behaviors, the leader must be respectable. A well-ordered life is the fruit of a well-ordered mind. The life of the leader should reflect the beauty and orderliness of God. Then, the leader must be ready and able to teach. In a leader, what's for this desire? This spark, it creates opportunities to help others understand the meaning of spiritual life. The leader feels the joy of the spirit and wants others to know God as well. Moreover, the leader's responsibility for teaching those under him should be supported by a blameless life. Teaching is a hard work, and doing it well takes time, preparations, study, and prayer. Oh, for teachers among us, leaders who know how to read hearts apply truth to the needs of the people. As a good physician reads patients and applies remedies to their ills, there are soul sickness open and obscure, acute and chronic, superficial and deep seats 
which the truth in Jesus will heal. But it is not the same truth for its deed, any more than the same medicine for every disease. That is why we should most diligently study the Bible and pray the constant and powerful illumination of the Spirit. This gift is never indulged in a cheap disparagement of the whole intellect and was always trying to promote knowledge of the scriptures and spiritual renewal among the people. He was intellectually gifted and possessed an impressive command of English literature. An eminent preacher declared that he knew of no sermons that gave a greater evidence of an intimate knowledge, yet he was widely known as a person of one book. The kind of read focus on the scriptures is a high example of the consecrated intellectual of the spiritual leader. In personality qualifications, if you would rather pick a fight than solve a problem, do not consider leading the kingdom. The kingdom leader must be genuine and gentle, not a lover of controversy. The leader should be one who corrects and redresses the injustices of justice. That the leader should be one who remembers good rather than evil. The good one has received rather than the good one has done. The leader must be actively considerate, not merely passive, and certainly not withdrawn, but ironic in disposition, always seeking a peaceful solution and able to diffuse and explosive situations. Then, the leader must show hospitality. This ministry should never be seen as an earthsome imposition, but rather as one that offers the privilege of service. Must be hospitable, a man who gladly and at all times welcomes into his house the servants of God. When Paul wrote this letter to Timothy, in were few, dirty, and known for their immoral atmosphere. Visiting Christians depended on open doors of hospitality. A friend of the author, a person with a rather large portfolio of business and church responsibilities, kept an open home policy for visitors and the underprivileged for its Lord's Day. It was a practice that enriched his life and blessed others, and demonstrated this important quality of spiritual leadership. Covertousness and its queen, the love of money, disqualify a person for leadership. Financial reward cannot enter a leader's mind in the exercise of ministry. The leader must be as willing to accept the appointment with a lower remuneration as one with a higher. In domestic qualifications, the Christian leader who is married must demonstrate the ability to manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4, we cannot accept the picture of a stern and smiling patriarchs immune to laughter and impervious to emotion. But Paul urges a well-ordered home where mutual respect and supportive harmony are the pillows. 
failure to keep home in order has kept many ministers and missionaries from their fullest potential. To reach this goal, a spouse must fully share the leader's spiritual aspirations and be willing to join in the necessary sacrifices. Many, a gifted leader has been lost to high office and spiritual effectiveness because of an uncooperative spouse. Without a benevolent and happy discipline in one's home, can a royal priesthood worker be expected to manage in a ministry? Can hospitality be offered if the children carry on without strain? Can a ministry to order families be effective if one's own family is in disarray? While a leader is caring for the kingdom and mission, he must not neglect the family, which is his primary and personal responsibility. The discharge of one duty in God's kingdom does not excuse us from another. There is time for every legitimate duty. Paul implies that a person's ability to lead a home is a strong indicator of his readiness to lead in the kingdom. In maturity, spiritual maturity is indispensable to good leadership. A novice or you convert should not be pushed into leadership. A plant needs time to take root and come to maturity, and the process cannot be hurried. The seed must take root downward before it can bear fruit upward. Says that no voices usually have an abundance of vegetations and are not yet pruned by the cross. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10, referring to qualifications for deacon, Paul urges they must first be tested. The church in Ephesus was a decade old when Timothy became its pastor. This church had an eight galaxy of gifted teachers so there were many of men mature, not as old as the fathers, as the others, but as spiritually rooted and fruitful. Paul did not insist on maturity as qualifications to lead the newly established church at Crete. At where the matured members were not yet present. In the early stages of building kingdom, developing the work be stable in character, spiritual in outlook, and not ambitions for position. Paul warns that a person not ready for leadership and trust into the role may become conceited and fall, and fall under the same judgment as the devil. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 6, a new convert does not yet possess the spiritual stability essential to leading people wisely. It is unwise to lead the positions too early, even to those who manifest promising Palette. Let, lest it spoil them. The story of the church and its mission is filled with examples of failed leaders who were appointed too soon. A novice suddenly placed in authority over others faces the danger of inflated ego. Instead, the promising convert should be given 
a widening opportunity to serve a humbler and less prominent task that will develop both natural and spiritual gifts. He should not be advanced too fast, lest he become puffed up. Neither should he be repressed, lest he be discouraged. Paul did not appoint elders in every place on his first missionary journey. He sometimes waited until a later visit when questions about spiritual development were satisfied. On Acts chapter 14 verse 23, Timothy was converted during Paul's first journey, but not ordained until the second journey. It is the mark of a grown man as compared to with a callow youth that he finds his center of gravity wherever he happens to be at the moment and however much he longs for the object of his desire it cannot prevent him from staying at his post doing his duty that is just what a new convert finds difficult to do it is a characteristic that accompanies a growing maturity and stability. Maturity is shown in a magnanimous spirit and broad vision. Paul's encounter with Christ transferred him from a narrow-minded begot into a full-hearted leader. The end dwelling Christ Regards his passions for others, broaden his view of a world, and depended his convictions. The importance of the above requirements for leadership in the Christian church are recognized even in a secular circles. He must be prudently self-controlled, sober, frugal. Enduring in toy, intelligent without love of money, neither young nor old. If possible, the father of a family, able to speak competently and of good reputation. If the world demands such standards of its leaders, the kingdom of the living God should select its leaders with even a great here. Your servant, Fatima Payumayong from Malolos, Bulacan. Thank you.